Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jerry Galloway, lead pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. I'd like to pray before we head into the word of the Lord together. Father, thank you for being such a good, good father to us. And thank you today for all that you've done in our lives, all you've been in our lives, and all that by faith we believe you will continue to be in our lives. Father, I pray today as we look into the pages of your word, I pray your word will look into us, challenge us, encourage us, strengthen us, Father, as we walk this journey of life in faith. Father, I believe you for these things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Today I want to honor the heroes of this life that we call fathers. Men who work hard, put others before themselves. Men who strive to be great dads, husbands, and fathers. When the culture all around us is constantly rewriting the book, if you will, on fatherhood. I want to encourage you. Those who feel as though they don't always hit the mark, but you keep getting back up and pressing on. I want to congratulate those who are learning how to be a dad at all the stages of your child's life for a job well done. You always thought there was probably a manual somewhere that told us that we'd automatically know how to be a dad. About the time we thought we were getting a handle on it, then our kids head into another stage of life, and everything gets changed. My hat is off today to all of the men whose desire it is to be good dads, men who are not perfect, but who are persistent. My heart is to encourage those of you who are working to be good fathers whether you are a stepfather, a biological father, a grandfather, or even a spiritual father. Men who are learning what it means to be fathers while they're raising their children. Brave men who courageously strive to be the father that their children and their family needs them to be. Find that fatherhood is a God-given role. Fatherhood was in the plan of God from the very beginning. Fathers, you and I were destined for this moment in time. Fatherhood. It's not an easy task. It is not for the faint of heart. It's not a role for the perfect and the all-knowing. But it is an incredible honor to be called a father. Today, throughout the message, today's message is going to be a little bit different in format Some men from the Church Through the Way of Video are going to help me today as we share the word of the Lord with you and encourage you today in your walk as fathers. My prayer today is that you will be encouraged. My prayer is that though this world constantly shares what we're doing wrong, that you will feel the presence and the grace of God and the encouragement of his spirit to keep pressing on. Brother Wayne. You know, some of the uh, characteristics or the traits, character traits of God that I've experienced in my life are uh, God's goodness and his faithfulness. You know, regardless of what's going in our lives or how bad our lives seem to be, God is always there to pick up the pieces and help us to uh, get back on track with what we need to do. And these are some of the characteristics that I'd like to pass on to my kids. If they can experience God's goodness, if they can experience His faithfulness and follow His leading and direction for their lives, then I really believe that uh, they can be blessed uh, as I've been blessed throughout my life. You know, my grandfather was a great father figure in my life. He was one of the most gentle, Uh, kind souls that that I knew and uh, I learned a lot from my grandfather you know he was a uh, upstanding businessman in the small community we grew up in and even though he's well off he never flaunted that and he was that gentle soul that always um, was willing to go out of his way to help somebody in need if there was another community member that needed something he was always there to help and that was just 
uh, some life lessons that I learned that I really appreciated about my grandfather. You know, I didn't grow up in a Christian home, and I didn't grow up uh, in a home that was loving and had a lot of compassion in it. Um, I didn't have those things, and so God has really worked in me in my life to ensure that I do those things for my kids. I, God has really instilled with me the sense of being a great father. Um, I constantly have to be reminded, I'm constantly working with God's help to do things for my kids that show them that I love them and to tell them that I love them. Those are things that uh, God has really worked in my life to do. And I will forever be thankful for God for, for that part of my life. You know, the past couple of years, God has really worked in my life with trust. Uh, he has really uh, instilled, with, instilled in me this concept of trust and trusting Him not only in my personal life, but in my life as a father. And this is a concept that I hope to pass on to my kids as well. Uh, trusting God, following His direction for our lives, uh, following His leading. Uh, if we are sensitive to Him and what He has for us and trusting Him, then He has big plans for our lives. Amen. To all fathers who are engaged in this role of fatherhood, though not an easy task, though it's a daunting task, though often the obstacles seem higher than our ability to climb over, I want to encourage you today in the role of fatherhood to be strong in the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 says this, a Final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Tony talked about trusting God. You know, the ability of this man that stands before you today to be the father that is needed I am without. I don't have all the qualities. I don't have all of the giftings that is needed to accomplish the task. I am very confident that you and I walk the same road as fathers. My friend, I want to encourage you today. Be strong in the Lord and in his power. I remember standing at the window of the nursery at Ball Memorial Hospital on July the 17th, 1992. I remember my wife had been in labor and uh, many hours, many hours. <laughs> and the last minute, the doctor came rushing in the room and said, we're going to have to do an emergency C-section and they got her ready and they whisked her out of the room and I stood in the room holding the camera bag and all the other things wondering what do I need to do. Within a few minutes, the nurse walked out of the door into the hallway holding a bundle and she said, I suppose this is yours. And I said, I have no idea. You were back there with my wife. I don't know. <laughs> They took him down to the nursery and they began to get him together. And at that time, it was in such a rush that my parents, nor Paula's parents, had been able to get to the hospital. And I remember standing there by myself, looking at a life that God had placed into my life. And I remember feeling the immediate sensation of what do I do? How? The incredible thing that amazed me, I had, I had never met him. But immediately, my heart was filled with love for him. Immediately, I would have scaled the highest mountain and walked through the deepest valley for him, though I had only seen him for a few moments. Something had changed. Gentlemen, I want to tell you that fatherhood is not an easy task. Especially in the world that you and I live in today. For the world you and I are engulfed in is in a constant state of change and flux. The challenges of fatherhood continue to change day in and day out. About the time you think you've got the terrible twos and threes done, they change. You spend many days and months going, say, Mama, I'm Daddy. Then a few years you spend time saying, will you please be quiet for a little while? 
And then they get old enough, they get opinions. Y'all, y'all been walking through those, haven't you? They get opinions, and then they go into another season where they know everything. And it's not long in that state of being all-knowing that they leave the nest. And being a father takes on a totally different role. It's not long then until you become a grandfather and the rules change all over again. You know, the truth is it is a daunting, it is a high task. My friend, though the challenges to you and I as fathers are great, I would tell you today that our God is greater. He's promised to give you and I everything that we need to fulfill the task before us. Why do I need God's help? Because I can't do this thing on my own. Why do I need the Holy Spirit's presence in my life? Because I need him to guide me, to help me, to instruct me. I love the passage of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. It says, by his divine power, God has given us everything. Somebody say everything. God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. Listen, friend, do you need more? God has what we need. Do you need greater instruction to be a father? God has it. Do you need wisdom? God has it. Do you need help? Do you need strength? God has it. Tony said in the video earlier, trust him. Trust him. Oh, friend, you can't trust the book on the shelf at the store. You can't trust the person maybe you work down the aisle from at work. But you can trust God. God will never lead you wrong. God will always give you what you need. He'll give you wisdom and strength for the journey. He'll help you to be the dad your children need you to be. We may feel overwhelmed sometimes by the task of fatherhood, but God is never overwhelmed. He's the creator of fatherhood. He knows everything we will need, and he's promised to provide all of it. Have you ever come to a time in your life where you needed wisdom? James 1 and 5 says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. Are there times you feel you need strength? He gives promises for what we need, Philippians 4 and 13. I love this in the uh, contemporary English version. It says, Christ gives me strength to face anything anything he gives me strength to face anything Isaiah 40 and 29 he gives strength to the weary and increases power to the weak Psalm 46 and 1 God is our refuge and strength always ready to help in times of trouble you ever had some times of trouble in your life whoo boy it can be rough can't it God is a present. The thing I like about God, I don't have to call him up and say, God, can you come over here? He says, I'm already here. God, I need your help. What is it you need, son? God is a very present help in times of trouble. When you need guidance, the word says he'll lead you. Psalm 119 and 105, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Friend, when you don't know what to do, trust in the one who does. Those today who are engaged in fatherhood, no matter what stage you may be in today, my friend, find strength in the Lord. He will help you. Through prayer, you'll find his presence to be near. Through his word, you'll find his counsel to be true. Through his Holy Spirit, you will find the power that you need to accomplish the task. To my brothers, I say today, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Brother Wayne. Um, The character trait of God that I've experienced in my own life um, that I want to pass down to my kids pretty much is... It's, it's all encompassing because I wasn't raised really with my father. Um, I was raised with men, but not my own father. So God really has been my father. He's actually molded me into who I am now. So I've experienced God on uh, in many facets, you know, as a regular father. You know, he, he promised that as your, if your mother and father forsake you, that he will uh, lift you up. And he's actually done that. So I've experienced him in many areas that... Um, I can pass all those down to my my children and um, 
implemented those into my own fatherhood. So there's been a couple of men in my life that um, have been kind of father figures. There are three pastors. One of the pastors was W.J. Jackson in Muncie. He, he demonstrated great leadership. The other pastor is uh, William O'Neill, and he showed me how to be an all-around good man and a good father. And the third one is um, Pastor Ricky Jones, and he showed me how to be uh, a great father and a great leader also. So God was faithful in that, and um, those were like three fathers in my life. And I don't want to exclude my father. I didn't get to know him really until I was probably uh, 16, 17 years old. But when I dropped my guard and I got to know my father, he showed me uh, business acumen, um, how it's important to grow, to grow your mind, to grow your spirit, and to grow your, your body and to be all-encompassing. So I don't want to leave him out, even though I didn't know him until later on in life, or, you know, in my teenage years. But he has shown me that. Um, God is continually changing me to be a better father, um, the father that my daughters need me to be um, in many facets, in many, in many ways, because it's a continuous process. Um, I continually have to evaluate every day and every interaction with my daughters, especially my daughters, um, to make sure that I am giving them what they need and to evaluate the errors that I'm, I do make. The, um, the Holy Spirit allows me, but he actually brings up the situations that I'm in, and if there's error, he actually points them out, you know, just knowing his word, he brings it out and he points out the, the errors that you make in the interactions with your daughters, uh, with my daughter. And um, God has um, helped me in my role as a father because uh, of that, that interaction with him. He's, he's very present and he's always speaking. He's, he's always speaking. You just have to sometimes uh, listen more. And um, he shows me. He doesn't allow me to err so bad with my daughters that it causes a traumatic event. But he actually stops me, and the Holy Spirit stops me and teaches me in that moment. As you all know, uh, my girls are, are full of life. You've seen them, especially at the 1045 service. I've got puked on. Um, Mimi, the small one, you hear her crying during offering or prayer. She picks those perfect times to just act chaotic. So, uh, but the, the great thing about me having two little girls um, is that I have uh, two totally distinct personalities. I have one who is very petite, particular about what she eats. She doesn't like bread, she doesn't like sweets, you know, and you can tell by if you look at her. Then I have the, the younger one who is very um, bossy and very aggressive, um, and she, uh, she has to have her way. She, you know, so I have these two dynamics. One even doesn't even like to eat, and the other one likes to eat everything. And then somehow your food tastes better than her food, even though it's the exact same food. <laughs> So, um, just having these two distinct personalities that I have to love, you know, and um, and try and, and, and um, approach each distinct personality as its individual. Um, I can't love them the same. And the great thing about God as a father is He loves us all the same. I, I love how, um, in my own life, I can see how He loves me as I love my two distinct daughters. To those of you who are engaged in fatherhood today, I would encourage you not only to be strong in the Lord, but I would encourage you to love without reservation. The most notable thing that we know about God, our Heavenly Father, is His incredible love for us. It's the one thing that drew us to Him, and it's the one thing that has brought us into this powerful salvation that He's given to us. See, God's love for you and God's love for me is unconditional, it's unfathomable, it's unbelievable. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1 says these words, see what great love the Father has lavished on us. Now I know as fathers we often, uh, we aren't overly dramatic, we may be dramatic in our own ways, but... Uh, we don't seem to be real mushy and we don't seem to be real forward often in our love and our presentation of love. I want to encourage you dads today to take a cue from the Heavenly Father. He says, what great love the Father has lavished 
poured out with generosity, given with increasing measure on our life. It says, notice the great love the Father's life is that we should be called the children of God. We're his kids. There's nothing more powerful, nothing more life-giving and inspiring than the love of God. A father's love, there's nothing in this world that can change life like a father's love. Nothing that will impact the hearts and breathe hope and confidence into your children more than your love for them. I encourage you, fathers, love your children without reservation. Love your children without boundaries. You and I know a world today where people are loved, accepted, applauded by what they can accomplish, by what type of name they can make for themselves, what they can do, who they can become. I'd like to encourage you today. True love knows no boundaries. True love sees beyond our failures and sees our needs. I encourage you to love your children without boundaries. When they fail, love them in their failures. When they take a wrong path, love them in life through to their return, back to the right path. When they don't want your love, how many of you as parents ever found a time when you were an embarrassment to your kids? Some of y'all did it on purpose, did you? Especially dads, we love doing that stuff. You know, nobody goes out in public and when their kid is a teenager, their teenager goes to all their friends and says, hey, let me, in, let me show you. This is my mom and my dad. Usually it's like, will you please go hide somewhere else? <laughs> when they aren't readily accepting of our love, love them anyways. Let love be the conquering theme of your life. Oh, you and I may want them to know that we're the top dog and that we got all the answers and we got it all together and we can do anything that needs to be done. But the thing will that will impact them the most is knowing that you love them with no reservation in your heart. Friends, love is not passive, but love is active. Love them, guys. Love them with gusto. Not just a little bit. Give it all you've got. Love through fatherhood like you were created to love. You know, the world has created a persona that says if we love, that love is weak. If we love on our kids and we love on our wives and our families that we're somehow weak. But I can tell you today the world is wrong. The world is wrong. There's no one more powerful than our heavenly father and the word of God describes him in this way in 1 John 4 and verse 8. God is love, period. You know, we are most like God when we're loving. We're most like him when we give his greatest trait. Your love for your family, friends, will enable them to scale the mountains of life and dredge through the valleys of difficulty and stand on the shores of victory. All because of your love. To every man who is engaged in fatherhood today, I want to encourage you guys to love with gusto. Give it all you've got. Don't hold anything back. Brother Wayne. I feel like one of the biggest traits that God has given me that I would love to see in my children is, is the trait of patience. Um, having the patience in life to to not rush into things, to look at look at things in a different perspective as the way God would and pray to him and have the patience to wait for his answer. I feel like my grandfather has been a big influence in my life as far as showing the characteristics of God. And he was such a loving and caring person. He always took care of everybody and, and I mean, he just made sure all his kids and his grandkids and his great-grandkids and everybody was taken care of. He would, I can remember, he would get eggs and bread and milk. And he would take it to everybody. Everybody got a loaf of bread, everybody got a dozen of eggs. And he'd done this like once a week. And I think God in him so much, especially now that I've moved on in faith. And 
he's just, he was such a big influence. I mean, he was so giving. And I try to think, you know, Grandpa used to just go so far out of his way for everybody to help them with everything that he could. And I try to do the same. And life's busy, and sometimes it's hard to, to reach out with your hand. But I remember that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to serve others as he did. He was just such a funny and fun-loving guy. And I just, I think that he shown all the characteristics of God through him. He, he was a godly man. My, my father too, I have to say, he's been such a big part of my life. He's always been there. And he's always made sure that we had what we needed. He's so forgiving because I know we've done a lot of crazy things, me and my brothers. And he'd be mad for a while, but he's never stayed mad at us. He's always been very forgiving. and He's always helped us and my brothers so much. He's a guy I can call, say, hey, I've got a problem. I need your advice. You know, what do you think on anything? I mean, problems at home, if I'm wanting to look at a new truck, I mean, anything. I've always been able to call him to give me advice, and he's always stirred me in a good direction. And I'm so lucky to have that. We've been, me and my wife's been married for three years now, and we first started coming to church right after we got married and started coming pretty steadily. And we had a couple of hiccups there where we kind of fell off the train. And, and we've been back in it steady since we've found out we was pregnant with our daughter and since we've had her. And, and I just feel like he is just showing me how to lead her in his direction to, to help her to look to God like I am now so much and depend on his word and his, uh, and his answers to the questions and the problems. And, and I, I mean, it's just so amazing though because it was like once we found out we was pregnant, then that was the point in time where we both looked at each other and said, it's time to straighten up. We have to, we have to do this for our daughter. And, uh, and it's just, it's wonderful. It's an awesome feeling. And, and I thank him every day and I pray to him every day that he would show me how to become a better person for my daughter and to, to show her how to live a better life and to look to him for all her problems and answers. You know, since we've had our daughter, I, I feel like I've kind of relayed on prayer a lot more to, you know, the late nights where we'd get woke up three, four times, you know, and she'd only sleep and you get aggravated and frustrated and, and everything. You just, you take that time just to pray and, and it just seems like you kind of mellow out again and, and, and then you just kind of sit there and rock her and keep her happy and know that at that point in time, that is your job, and I feel like he's helping me out so much with that, knowing that my number one job at life right now is to first look to him for my answers and the questions to my problems, and, and to be a father to her, and to show her and to teach her all that she needs to know in life. proud of these guys as they uh, stepped up to talk about what fatherhood is. You know, I want to encourage you today as fathers, in spite of all things, in spite of our past, all of us have a past, don't we? In spite of the days that we think we've hit the mark and some of the days when we haven't hit the mark. We look back at our life and we see things we wish we had done differently. Sometimes that can leave you with the feeling of I've blown the past and what is there yet ahead of me. Last of all today, I want to encourage all of you who are engaged in fatherhood to never give up. Never stop being a dad. Never stop being who he created you to be. I love the Passage from Romans, the 12th chapter in verse 11. It says, never give up. Eagerly follow the Holy Spirit and serve the Lord. Never, ever give up. I want to encourage you to keep pressing on, to keep fighting the good fight of faith. Continue to be the influence in the lives of your children. Don't give up. Don't give in. Never quit. Never, never quit. Have you ever been on a task and it seemed like the harder you work, the less you accomplished? 
Days where it seems like you gave it your all and you look back and you think nothing has changed. Friends, I want to encourage you in the role of fatherhood. Never stop being a dad. Never stop being a dad. If my uh, father were here with me today, he is in heaven. My dad would have been 84 years old this year. I still would be calling him and saying, I need this, I need that. I'd still be calling him saying, Dad, what do you think I ought to do here? I'd be calling him and say, hey, Dad, the car's broke down again. Can you come help me? And you know, I think if my dad could stand here in my place today, my dad would have told you that he was not a perfect father. But I want to challenge you, all men, with this thought. Your children don't need Superman. They just need you. They don't need something you're not. They need you. Our kids need us, flaws and all. Our kids need us. Their lives are not complete without our influence. I can tell you, my life has a huge hole in it where my father's voice once filled. So all I can do today is rely and reflect and remember of the days that are gone by. Guys, While we have the time, let's be the best dads we can be. Never get up. Yes, I know, I know you feel discouraged sometimes. I know sometimes you feel disappointed. Never give up. Never stop being a dad. There may be situations that have caused you to feel discouraged. And some of you sitting here today as a father, you may feel as though you're a failure. You may, because of your past, feel as though your influence as a father will never be felt. But my friend, please hear me today. There's nothing that is impossible and too hard with our God. You see, you can't undo your past, but you do have a future in God. And with him and the power of his grace, you can be the father that your children need you to be. God can do it through us, what we could never do on our own. Never give up, Dad. Keep pressing on. I encourage you with the words of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. 2 Chronicles 15 and 7. But as for you, be strong and courageous for your work will be rewarded. Stand strong, Dad. You've trusted him with your past. Now trust him with your future. Your family needs you. Your kids need you. Listen, guys, you were born for this moment in time. Never give Never come to the place where you say, it's not worth it. I can't do this. One of the most despairing truths about our culture today is the absenteeism of dads. And I'm not talking just about dads who aren't in the home. I'm talking about sometimes dads who are in the home, but they're still absent. Guys, don't give up. Don't give up. You are the man that your kids need. You're the father that God created you to be. Rise to the occasion and never give up. So guys, on this Father's Day, I encourage you, 
Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Love without reservation and know no boundaries. And then last of all today, I encourage you to never, ever give up. Would you bow your heads today? Dear Father, I thank you today for who you are. And I thank you today that you love us so very much. I thank you, Lord, that you've never given up on us, though, Lord, we've given you many reasons to give up on us. Thank you that you have persisted. Thank you that you have persevered. And thank you that you have been patient with us. Father, I pray for all fathers today. I pray today will be a day where you will strengthen their hearts and strengthen their resolve. Touch them today, I pray. Lord, I'm trusting you for this. I'm placing it all in your hands now, Father. In Christ's name, amen. Would you continue to keep your heads bowed? I want to just talk to you for a moment in closing here. You know, one of the things that I know about this life is that I have not, uh, as a father, I've not always made all the right choices and I've not always made the right decisions. Sometimes as a father, I have missed the mark, and sometimes I've not always uh, been right on the spot. But I can tell you this, that the longer that I've walked with God, I found this to be true. When my relationship with God is as it should be, my relationship with my family is as it should be. I'm a better dad. I'm a stronger dad with God's help in my life. And so, guys, I want to ask you today about your relationship with God. And I want to ask you today about what's happening between you and the Heavenly Father. Ask you today, how are things going between you and God? Are things right with you and God? Are is the relationship strained between you and the Heavenly Father? I'd just like to encourage you this morning, friend, that today is a good day to return back to the Father. Today is a good day to return back to walking with Him. And maybe you're here and you say, you know what? My relationship with God today is not quite what it should be. and My relationship with God is not quite what it ought to be. Maybe you're here and you say, you know what, my relationship with God, you say, Pastor, I, I, I don't know what it is to have a relationship with God. I've never known him in that way. I just want to encourage you today, friend, to look to him. Look to him for strength and help. So I just want to pray right now with all heads bowed. Friend, I, I'm not going to embarrass anyone or call anyone out right where you're at today if you just say pastor I need God's help I need God's help in my life and my relationship with him is not what it quite should be and I need his help in my life if that's you friend would you just lift your hand right where you're at and just say remember me in prayer today yes 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 Yes. You can put your hand down for it after you've raised it. Any of those that have joined these that say, I, I need his help today. I need his help. I want to be the father that I need to be. And I know that starts with my walk with him. How many others you'd lift your hand and say, please remember me in prayer. Please remember me in prayer. Is what we're going to do, guys. I'm going to pray right now, but as I pray, I want to encourage you to pray. Maybe there's an area in your life and you say, I need his forgiveness, then 
Friend, right where you're at, all you got to do is ask him. Maybe you say, I need his strength. Ask him for his strength. If you've walked away from the Lord and you're not serving, right now's the time to return and say, Lord, I come back to you. Lord, would you forgive me and receive me and make me yours? Whatever your situation might be, friend, I just encourage you to talk to him right where you're at. Father, right now as I pray, I pray for each person that's lifted a hand today. Father, you know their life. Father, you know everything that they're facing, everything they're walking through. And Father, you know what has stirred them to lift a hand. Father, I pray you'll respond to that need. Lord, I declare today we need you. And Lord, if we've, if we've got cold in our relationship with you, Holy Spirit, do the work of the Father. Lord, would you, would you restore us today? Father, for those who need strength and need your guidance, I pray you'll give that today. Father, for those today who need salvation, Lord, you said you wouldn't turn us away if we call on you. Lord, I pray right now as they pray, Lord, would you come in with salvation and the forgiveness of sin? Make us right in our relationship with you. Father, I pray today you will do for them what no one else can do for them. I pray that this Father's Day will be a life-changing Father's Day for all eternity. Father, we pray these things and we ask them all in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. So be it. So be it. In closing, I'd like to ask you if you'll stand with me this morning. What I'd like to do today, I'd like to ask all fathers, I'd like to ask if all fathers, if you would come and stand across the front facing the front. All fathers from all over the building, if you'll come. I want to take a few minutes and speak some word of blessing over your life. All the fathers, just keep coming, guys. And if you'll just kind of move in where we can get all the guys around the front. What a great moment, a great opportunity, and great lives stand before us today. This is our season, guys. You say, well, I already raised mine. Man, your season's not over. Your season's never over, guys. Because we're created to be influencers, leaders, life changers. Continue to be that man. Today I want to speak a word of blessing not only over you, but I want to speak some words of blessing into you. Blessing can't come unless it's spoken. And I want to speak those words into your life today. You are the gift of God to your children. You are a father with wisdom, knowledge, and Holy Spirit direction. You are exactly the man your children need. May the wisdom of God, may the strength of his Holy Spirit, the power of Jesus Christ fill your life. You are uniquely created by God's incredible design. You are the only part of his creation that bears his name, the name Father. You are created in the image of God. Therefore, you have his heart, you have his love, and you have his strength. You were created by God for this task. You have the skill set, the mindset, and the ability to leave a legacy of life for those who follow your direction. God created within you the spirit of a leader, a conqueror, and a victor. 
discouragement, and disappointment will not stop you from your destinies. You will not be known by your past, but by your future in the name of Jesus. You are his masterpiece. You're one of a kind, and within each of you lie the seeds of greatness. You are not defective. You are not flawed. But you have been wonderfully made, and you are equipped to fulfill everything that God has placed in your hearts. You are blessed. You are chosen. You are called. You are loved. You are valued. You are greatly needed. And you are empowered. Be bold. Be strong. Be courageous. Because you are a father. God of heaven, I pray for these men today. Lord, we all understand the task is daunting at best. God, I pray today that you will give them strength and encouragement. Encourage them, Lord, to look beyond the days gone by to be the men for the days that lie ahead. Father, help them not to dwell or be discouraged by the past. Let them be inspired by the future they have in you. Strengthen them today, I pray. And I pray the blessing of God over their life. I pray, Lord, that you will keep them. Father, that you will cause your face to shine upon them. I pray, Father, that whatever they put their hands to, that you will cause it to prosper, that your name will be glorified in their life. I believe you for these things, Father, and ask them all in the abundance of your incredible name. Amen, amen, and amen. To each of you, I say happy Father's Day. What a great opportunity and blessing it is in my life to be in the ranks of such incredible men. May God bless you today, and um, as you leave, for everyone in honor of being Father's Day. Uh, as you leave there, uh, our root beer floats that are available for everybody, the ladies and uh, all the kids, dads, you, know, you get a double dip. <laughs> and, uh, may you have a great day today. May God's blessing be yours. Happy Father's Day to each one of you. God bless you. Have a great day today. May the joy of the Lord be your strength.